working with task duration, constraints and deadlines. Whenever you create a task, you have to set the duration for the task, or how long it will take to complete. However, before you enter a duration for a task, you must know the three task types. These types will have an effect on how project schedules the work of the task. The three task types in Project 2016 are fixed duration. Fixed duration tasks take a set amount of time to complete, no matter how many resources there are for the task. Fixed units. These are the default task type. When you use this type, you assign resources to a task with a certain number of units or hours of work expressed as a percentage of the working day. The resources assignments do not change even if you would change the duration of the task or the work amount. Fixed work. This is where the number of resource hours assigned to a task affects its duration. Don't worry about resources at this point. We will cover these in just a few lessons. To set a task type, double click a task to see the task information dialog box. Click on the advanced tab. Now you can select the task type in the task type field. You can only assign task types to auto scheduled tasks. Also note that if you have a parent task followed by subtasks, you can assign the task types to the subtasks. Let's change this task to auto schedule by clicking on the button here in the ribbon. Then double click on the task again. You can then change the task type here. Setting a duration for a task means setting the amount of time it will take that task to complete. With all task information that you enter, you need to be in Gantt chart view. Double click the task name to see the task information dialog box. If your task has subtasks, you'll have to click on each subtask and enter the duration of those individually. Project will then determine a total duration. The total duration will appear for the parent task. Use the arrows to increase the duration or decrease the duration. The measurement displayed by default is days or D. If you need to change the measurement, enter M for minutes, H for hours, or W for weeks, and MO for months. Enter a duration and then click OK. Recurring tasks are tasks that are worked on and completed at regular intervals. To set a recurring task, go to the task tab, then click on the downward arrow below the task button. Select recurring task from the drop down menu. You'll then see this dialog box. Enter a name for the task, then set the duration for the task. Then set a recurrence pattern. You can choose daily, weekly, monthly or yearly. The pattern you select will determine the options that you see. For weekly occurrences, you'll choose if you want it to recur every week, every two weeks, every three weeks or so on. Then you can choose the day of the recurrence. Next, select the range of the recurrence. This is to tell project how long the project recurs. Does it recur for a month, a year, or another period of time? For example, perhaps your task recurs every week for six months. Your range of recurrence would be six months. You would set the start date in the start field, then enter the end date, which is six months later in the end by field. You can also set it so that the recurrence ends after X amount of occurrences by checking the end after field here. Choose the calendar you want to use, then click on the OK button. When you set a start and finish date for a task, it applies a constraint that can override any dependency, which we'll learn about later, or any other timing factors. We'll learn more about constraints later as well, but for now it is easy to learn how to set a start and finish date. To set a start date, double click on the task name. In the task information dialog box, click on the general tab if it's not already selected. In the date section, select the start and finish dates. Then click OK. Earlier, we learned how to set duration. When we open up the task information dialog box, you can see a checkbox called estimated next to the duration field. When this is checked, a question mark appears after your duration. 
You check this box when you are unsure how long a task will take and want to let people know about your uncertainty or if you need a way to enter exact timing when you have more information. Once you've checked the estimated box, you need to apply a filter that will apply to all tasks with estimated durations. Let's go ahead and click OK with that box checked so we can show you how to apply a filter. To apply a filter, select the duration column in your task list by clicking on the duration column header once, then clicking the downward arrow to the right of it. All filters are selected by default. To see just the tasks that have estimated durations, only check the box with question marks that follow the duration. To clear the filter, click on the drop down again and then click on clear filter from duration. Of course, when you have a project, you're going to need the project to be completed by a certain date. With that, you will have deadlines for tasks so that each aspect of the project runs smoothly and on time. In project, a deadline is a date that you can assign to a task that does not constrain the task's timing. When you assign a deadline date to a task, and the task runs past the deadline, project displays an indicator symbol by the task itself. To someone that's never used project before, this may seem a bit confusing, especially since we haven't even discussed constraints thus far. The good news is that we are going to devote the next section of this lesson to learning about constraints. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and show you how to set a deadline for a task because it is so easy to do. To set a deadline date, double click a task to make the task information dialog box appear. Click on the advanced tab. Click on the arrow in the deadline field. A calendar will appear. Select your deadline date by clicking on it. Click OK to exit out of the task information dialog box. A little downward arrow will appear on the deadline date in the Gantt chart area of the Gantt chart view, as you can see here. To modify a deadline, follow those earlier steps and simply change the date. It's that easy. In our day-to-day -day lives, constraints are something we have to live with. A good example of this would be budget constraints that prohibit us from shopping as much as we'd like. In project, constraints really are not much different, so do not be afraid of them. We haven't put off discussing them because they're that complicated. Instead, we just wanted to wait and introduce you to them at the proper time, when perhaps everything else about tasks no longer seems so daunting and confusing. That said, in project, a constraint is simply a timing condition that controls a task. You already know that task start and finish times control the duration of a task and determine its timing. A constraint comes into play when the project starts to run late. An example is when you set a constraint that a task must finish by a certain date. Microsoft Project will shift around almost any other task in the schedule to recalculate timing before it will suggest that the particular task might finish on another date. In other words, putting a constraint on a task means that everything else scheduled for your project might be shifted so that project can meet the constraint that you've set. Because of this, you should only use constraints if there's no other option and you absolutely need to. Before we teach you how to apply constraints, let's look at the possible constraints that you can put on a task and the effects it will have on a task's timing. As soon as possible is the default constraint. It will start as early as possible in the schedule based on the dependencies and the project start date. As late as possible means the task will start as late as possible. Finish no earlier than means that the end of the task cannot take place earlier than the start date that you specify. And finish no later than means that the end of the task cannot take place any later than the date you specify. The constraint must finish on means the task must finish by a specified date and must start on means a task must start on a specified date. Start no earlier than means a task cannot start any earlier than the specified date, and start no later than means a task can't start any later than the date that you specify. Before we do, let's take a look at our task list and graph as it exists now. This way, you can easily note changes that constraints will make. This may make it easier to understand, but it will definitely make navigating the workspace easier for you. To start, we double click on a task that we want to apply a constraint to so that the task information dialog box appears. Then click on the advanced tab. 
In the constraint type field, select the type of constraint that you want to apply. Once again, if some of the fields are greyed out, it's because the task is manually scheduled. Let's change this to auto schedule and the task above. Now double click on this right first lesson task. In the constraint type field, select the type of constraint that you want to apply. We are going to change the default constraint and instead select finish no later than. Then select a date. Click OK to save your settings. Now in the Gantt chart view, we now see the constraint noted for the task. The start and finish dates are highlighted and there's a calendar icon in the indicators column. In the graph, the taskbar appears on the earliest finish date we've specified for the constraint. In order to set constraints, tasks must be set to auto schedule. Critical tasks, also known as the critical path, are a series of tasks that must occur on time if your project is to meet its deadline. What you have to decide is how many tasks in your project are on the critical path and how many can be given some slack. There's not a formula or software program that can decide this for you, unfortunately. It is something you're going to need to figure out each time you run a new project. Here are some identifiers to help you locate critical tasks. Tasks that are critical to the completion of the project. Tasks that are time consuming and are maybe reliant on outside forces or perfect conditions. An example is having electricity installed in a new building. All types of problems can arise. You need electricity and you need to have the new building ready for occupancy by the deadline, but there's a chance it could take longer. Although you do not have time within the project for it to take longer, it very possibly could. And tasks that are critical to the project, but of which you aren't sure of the actual duration. Since any critical tasks that you have in your project can push you past the deadline if they're not completed, you have to figure out which ones are not critical so you can add some slack to those. That way, if the critical tasks need additional time, you can use the slack from other tasks without going past the deadline. This can be very important if you have a boss waiting for you to complete the project and relying on you to complete it on time. That said, some tasks already have slack built into them because they occurred during the duration of the longer task, so they share a dependency. You could delay the shorter task until the longer task gets closer to finishing. Here's how you can build slack into non-critical tasks to accommodate critical tasks and still meet your deadline. The first thing you can do is extend the duration of all tasks. Inflate them by two days or figure out the risk of delay with each task and pad them accordingly. The problem with this arises when changes occur. You may have to adjust durations on several tasks to accommodate a schedule that's running ahead or behind. The better idea is to build Slack tasks into your project, or even into each phase of your project. Slack tasks could be as simple tasks like approving proofs. This is a task that won't take but a few minutes, but you can build time into the project by creating this task. That way, if your critical task needs more time to complete, you have the extra time created by the Slack task that you can use. However, if your project won't allow you to add Slack tasks because there's not a minute to spare, there's also something else you can do. Check your dependencies. There may be some tasks that you have scheduled to start at the end of a predecessor task. Some of these tasks might be able to start during, or even with, the predecessor task. This will also help you build in some time to accommodate your critical tasks, or the critical path.